How's it going everyone and welcome to Formar Ranch. Today I'm pretty excited to be sharing with you the AccuFire Omnis. Now in short, what is the AccuFire Omnis? It is a digital day and nighttime capable spotting scope that can zoom into 120x magnification while also being able to record both videos and capturing photos. So very versatile, a lot of features. We're going to get into all those. So Full disclosure, if you don't want to listen to the entirety of this video, check the description below real quick. I'll have timestamps so you can skip to things, I'll give you a walk around on the outside, what's included, and of course some sample footage. So again, if you're after something specific, go ahead and skip to that using the timestamps below. Now, first things first, for the sake of being honest and transparent with you guys, I do want to disclose that AccuFire did send the Omnis to me um, for the purposes of producing an honest review. So again, me trying to be an honest reviewer. I want to disclose that to you because maybe you will think I'm biased in favor of the Omnis. That's up to you to decide, but I want to give you all the facts. And that is how I came into the possession of this Omnis here. So AccuFire does ask for what may be perceived as a steep price tag of $1,319 on their website at the time of me posting this video. That being said, do keep in mind if you browse their website, oftentimes I'll see sales up to 10%. You can also use discount code 4MR for 5% off. Now, full disclosure again, for the sake of ethics and transparency, if you use my code, it will also give me a slight kickback, but that does help support the channel so that I can purchase ammunition for testing products such as this and to provide you guys with my honest thoughts and opinions. So again, all the facts out on the table, we got all the ethics uh, you know, coverages uh, out of the way. Now let's talk about the Omnis itself. So we're gonna show you real quick what comes out of the box with this. You know what to expect if you choose to invest in it. Then we're gonna dive into some specs. And of course, I've gotta show you some sample footage. All right, so first things first, you're going to be greeted with the uh, AccuFire warranty card. So that's their performance guarantee, basically saying that you know they got your back, they have you covered. So uh, if you do break one of their products, they ask, you know, you just send it back in whatever condition, and then they're gonna use that to make future improvements. Now, the one caveat that I do want to point out is that the electric optics are, they have a three-year warranty. So any of the regular optical rifle scopes uh, covered for life, but electronics, three-year warranty, which I feel like is pretty fair, just cause, you know, electronics, uh, inevitably, they're going to eventually fail no matter how well they are put together. So anyways, that's the first thing that you're greeted with. You have an AccuFire branded microfiber cleaning cloth. You've got a 90 degree USB type C to regular USB um, cable. You have a straight USB type C cable. And you have a really nice micro USB, a four prong to your standard USB plug that you're used to. And I'll explain why here in just a second. And that is to simultaneously the eight set of CR123 rechargeable batteries. So they do include two full sets. This optic takes four batteries to run. And notice on the side that there's a micro USB port in each of these rechargeable batteries. So with that included four prong charger, you can charge an entire set of batteries simultaneously. Now what's even cooler about these batteries is they do have a little LED indicator on the top of each one that will either glow red if it's not completely charged or green when they're good to go. So again, two full sets. That's awesome to see because rechargeable CR123 batteries purchased aftermarket can get a little costly. Now, speaking of keeping you covered and not having to buy anything else right out of the box, they also include a SanDisk 32 gigabyte card. Now, once again, I'm just going to say that I'm pleased to see this. Not only did they include a SD card, so there's nothing else you have to worry about right out of the box, this thing is good to go. Um, they gave you a name brand memory card at that. I know a lot of times optics that include memory cards are some brand I've never heard of. I have no idea how reliable, so you're getting a quality, reliable memory card. So again, that's really awesome to see that right out of the box, you are good to go. You have a rubber sunshade for the rear screen, and you have a front objective lens sunshade, so a threaded piece of aluminum, once again, you're covered there. And of course, last but not least is the Omnis itself. So picking it up out of the box for the very first time, you'll notice that it is an entirely aluminum construction. There's a few plastic components here and there, but for the most part, this thing is a solid piece of aluminum. It feels like it is made very well. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels very, very solid in the hands. 
That being said, it is significantly lighter than I was expecting. It doesn't quite feel like a brick. Now, obviously I don't have, uh, you know, any kind of IR or illumination devices on top, or I've seen uh, some of the guys online mounting red dots just to kind of help you find that point of aim when you're looking through this, because we'll get into it, but this thing can zoom in a crazy amount. So anyways, Back to the point, it's extremely light taking it right out of the box. So let's go ahead and do a quick walk around of the external controls and then we'll dive further into the Omnis. So obviously you have a power button on top, so that's going to be the most important thing. So you can power this bad boy on. And then you have a dial on top that's going to both act as your zooming in and zooming out function, but it can also be pressed inwards to access the menu and make your selections in the menu. Now on the side of the optic, you have two slots. You have one for a memory card, that micro SD card slot right there, pretty simple. And then you have a USB type C port as well, which will allow you to power this optic externally. So if you opt to attach a um, battery to this rail, you can do so, or you can attach it somewhere onto your tripod or whatever you're going to mount this on. So again, gives you some options and flexibility. Speaking of batteries, here is your battery door, which is threaded and it has an O-ring to help fend off the elements. And there you go, just four CR123 slots right there. Cover itself, so again, it has that O-ring. This is, again, a solid piece of aluminum, feels very high quality, doesn't feel cheap or brittle. It's not a piece of plastic. And the last and probably one of the more important things I want to cover and point out is going to be this base plate here. So this is an Arca Swiss type tripod mount, which are very common in the uh, photography industry. So it's the adapters for these are plentiful. You don't have to go too crazy. Um, I believe the one I picked up for this was in the ballpark of about $20 to throw on top of my tripod for the sake of this video. So you don't need to buy anything too crazy. Again, because this thing is not super heavy, you don't have to have a super strong mount. Now, that being said, don't go too cheap to where, you know, your mount of choice breaks or, you know, releases this inadvertently and then drops it on the ground, um, that would obviously be a bad day. So you are only as strong as your weakest link. So do keep that in mind. All right, so talking about the Omnis itself, it has a 2.95 inch OLED display. Now, I will say you're probably gonna need the sunshade if you're using it during the daytime because although it is a daylight bright display, sometimes the sun can overpower it if you're looking into it at the wrong angle. So I recommend just keeping that in your range bag or leaving it attached like you see here. Uh, I found it to be very, very useful. And if nothing else, it helps you see better contrast on the screen in the back. Now, the biggest perk of it having a screen on the rear is that traditionally, if you're on a rifle rest or a bench rest, you typically have to get out from behind the rifle you're shooting at the time to then shift over and look through a traditional spotting scope. With this, I found it incredibly useful when zeroing rifles at 100 yards because I had it on a little tripod offset to the side and I could see the screen while staying behind the rifle. Just a quick glance over, seeing where those rounds are hitting for confirmation in case you're not using a high magnification scope. And there you have it. Simple as that. If you want to record, you can record. If you want to snap a quick photo of your target, you can do that as well. So again, very versatile depending on what your needs are. Me making YouTube videos for you guys, I think it's incredible that I can record targets at 100 yards plus to share with you guys. So expect some more videos out of the Omnis to come on the channel. I wanna talk about the magnification of the Omnis, which I briefly mentioned earlier, goes up to 120 power. So essentially my current understanding of it, for those of you that are very technical like me, is that it has a base magnification of 10 power that is done optically, and then it digitally zooms in from thereafter. Now, when I first heard about you know, 120 power magnification, especially, I assumed it was gonna be digital. Uh, I would have been surprised if somehow into this compact package, they got a, an optical magnification. So digital, for those that may not know, just means it's zooming in on the actual sensor that's in the, the body here. So similar when you have your iPhone and you keep zooming in, it, you know, unless you switch to like the 3X camera on your iPhone, for those of you that have the newer ones, uh, you're zooming in on the sensor, you'll notice that the resolution drops and on an iPhone fairly drastically. So 
Admittedly, I was expecting something similar on the Ominous. I thought by 120 power, the image was gonna fall apart, no contrast, you weren't gonna be able to see bullets on paper, but boy was I surprised. At 120 power, I truly do see bullet holes on paper at 100 yards, no problem whatsoever. And I'm gonna share some sample footage with you later in the video, but right now I'm just covering the general features of and specs of the Ominous. So, what else can it do? Uh, I had mentioned that it is a nighttime capable spotting scope. So this can see infrared light on the infrared light spectrum, obviously. So if you have any IR illuminators, you will be able to use this as a night vision spotting scope, which is also very, very unique. Now, I paired it with the strongest IR illuminator that I have, which is the Sniper Hog Lights Coyote Cannon, and I was able to see things not super clearly. Granted, I was able to identify and see things between 900 and 1,000 yards at night, no moon. So that is pretty impressive, and I would say that's probably about the best that you'll get out of it. The only other notable feature is that this has Wi-Fi capabilities, so you can connect it to your smart devices that have the AccuFire app installed. So again, it just gives you more versatility. If you wanna watch a live view through your mobile device, that's just one more option you have. So maybe more than one shooter can watch what's going on. You don't have to crowd around the 2.95 inch OLED display, which again, is still gonna share more of what's going on with people at the range than a traditional spotting scope will. So keep that in mind if you are downplaying the roughly three inch display on the back. Now, let's talk about how this, the heart and soul of how it operates. Uh, it's powered by four CR123 batteries. Now I did, get roughly two to three hours uh, at full brightness consistently using the provided AccuFire CR123s. Now I will say the one thing I noticed is that whenever you plug in the AccuFire batteries, it only, even when they indicate that they're fully charged, I started the battery life, usually it said 76 or 77%. And that's what got me between about two and a half to three hours of use on full brightness with, again, fresh battery, AccuFire branded batteries. Now, I wanted to see if the whole battery life indication that I get with the AccuFire batteries is just happening with the AccuFire branded batteries or if it happens with other CR123s. So I tried two different sets of brand new Surefire CR123s and oddly enough, it indicated 1% on those batteries. So um, I just pulled them out and admittedly, I didn't really run an experiment to see how long it would take to uh, drain those. You'll notice that you have a pick and tenny rail on top, so you can use that to mount battery packs, which AccuFire does have a, um, an external battery pack that attaches to pick and tenny rails that you can use with a number of their devices, but uh, this one included, so it can be externally powered as well uh, if you don't want to use the four CR123 internal batteries. There is a memory card slot where you can use a micro SD card, which I greatly greatly appreciate. I don't like when videos and photos are stored internally on digital devices. I like to be able to just pull an SD card out. It's much easier for me to then get the pictures and videos off without a proprietary software, which sometimes can corrupt the files and also compress them and make them not look as good. So I'm happy to see that they went with the memory card route on this. Other than that, you have a dial on top, which will give you, basically give you controls, and then you can focus the image with it, this front uh, focusing ring there. And although it's not super obvious, there is a sunshade currently installed on the front of the Omnis, which just unthreads off if you want to be a little bit more compact if the glare of the sun isn't a concern. Me, I just leave it installed for one so I don't lose it, and for two, because I find it to be pretty useful to get the best image. And I, again, leave that sunshade on the back as well. Other than that, the only other notable feature is that it uses a standard Arca Swiss base. Now I did temporarily remove it to see if there's other common screw mounts underneath it. Uh, if you don't wanna use an Arca Swiss style mount and there is not. So essentially the only screws in here are proprietary to this particular mount of theirs. So you will need an Arca Swiss ball head. Now, on that note, uh, I kind of went cheap, and this is about a $25 really small, um, small rig, actually brand ball head, which small rig makes really high quality camera gear. Um, I would say I recommend probably something a little bit more sturdy because when you go with the real compact sizes, although you're saving size and weight, it makes it much more difficult to fine tune the angle at which you're viewing. And keep in mind, at 120 power, a slight movement is really going to change your field of view quite a bit. So just something to think about. I recommend probably getting a more legit uh, ball head than what I am currently displaying on this mini tripod right here.
So of course what you guys are probably most interested in is going to be the sample footage. Now keep in mind that when it's blown up on my computer, there's some weird things going on here that's related to my editing software that you're not actually going to be seeing in the Omnis. It seems like I get some weird glitchy looking effects going on on my end, not related to the Omnis. But this gives you the opportunity to take a look at what the footage looks like outside of the Omnis. So 100 yards is obviously not a concern, not an issue, everything looks good. So moving further to 500 yards, this is where Heat Mirage is obviously going to take more of a factor on how much resolution and, and clarity is retained, just like when you're looking through your regular daytime optic. That being said, the image through the Omnis is good enough to see vapor trails hitting that steel at 500 yards, which is pretty cool. So if you pay attention kind of from the top right of the screen, you'll see that round coming down and making impact with that 500 yard target. You can actually see it moving through the air. So I'd say that looks pretty good on my end, especially since it's just really a perk to be able to record your footage. Now taking it to the absolute extremes, I did have some of our cows at about 2,500 yards away. That white building in the background is actually closer to 2,800 yards, but really just testing the absolute limits. So now when you're zoomed into 120 power at that kind of distance, the fact that you can still make out shapes is pretty impressive from a digital optic like this. And again, 105 degrees out in Texas in the summer, heat mirage is going to degrade things. But taking away the sun, let's look at how it looks at night. So here's just a 50 yard image, again using the Sniper Hog Lights Coyote Cannon, a very powerful IR illuminator. A very clean image and you can see that with those leaves moving, there's really not a whole lot of lag. The image is smooth and, and moving fluid like you'd hope. Now, I wanted to go ahead and just look at this brick for you, zooming in all the way at 120 yards. Again, using the same illuminator for all this, so you kind of get an idea of how much detail is or isn't retained. And already, we're starting to see a lot of noise, and again, a very powerful illuminator. We're not super far, so the night vision performance of this is somewhat limited. But pushing it to 380 yards, again, you get pretty noisy looking footage but you can still see what is going on at 380 yards. So it, it does the job, although this is definitely not a dedicated night vision device. It's really just night vision supplementing the Omnis. So again, pushing it to the extreme, over a thousand yards away, we have a tractor shed. Um, maybe it makes more sense to me than it will to you because I know what I was looking at, but you see the outline of the shed with some of the equipment inside. Almost unusable, but there you have it. So now let's go ahead and talk about my overall thoughts and opinions, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I guess we'll start with the cons that I've now discovered after using this between four and five months now. Actifier, if you're watching this, I do apologize. I know it's uh, been a long time coming. I've owed uh, this review, but uh, that just means uh, to you guys watching that I, again, I have more experience with this. I've had been using it pretty regularly for a good amount of time now, so I have better thoughts and opinions to be sharing with you. So on that note, the battery thing I mentioned earlier is a minor nuance that did kind of annoy me a little bit. Personally, I'd like to show up in the field and, and see 100% when the batteries uh, are also indicating, you know, the little LED on them goes green. That would be nice. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on when I try it with Surefire batteries. Uh, but again, so regardless, there's some nuances going with the battery life reading. That being said, it did drain at a slow and steady pace. It didn't go from like 50% to suddenly at 5%. And again, I got two and a half to three hours at max at the 100% brightness. So battery life actually was pretty impressive and that's also while recording video. For one of the tests I did, I just let it record a random field um, and it, it lasted that long. So uh, even using processing power inside to record, it, you get pretty good battery life. So um, I guess that's kind of a, a pro with the con mixed in. Now, the only other uh, two cons that I, I kind of want to talk about and they're one is kind of minor. Um, there's image stabilization built in, and I think that's definitely essential when you have 120 power magnification because any little bump, it's going to uh, it's going to just absolutely move that field of view pretty substantially. That being said, I felt like it was almost overdone just slightly because when I'm trying to adjust, the image kind of whips around and does some weird. Uh, um, I don't know really how to describe it, but it, the image gets kind of jello uh, For those camera guys out there, it almost looks like really severe rolling shutter. So it's almost like uh, the rate at which the sensor is scanning when you're moving it, it kind of doesn't look like it's that fast. But then once it's still and things are moving, everything, the refresh rate looks very fast in real time. So I'm not sure what's going on, but any movement you have 
um, temporarily. It seems to kind of degrade the image. Uh, so not sure what's going on there. I'm assuming it's the image stabilization maybe overcompensating just a little bit. Uh, and it does become more noticeable when you're at the higher magnifications, which again makes sense. You're zoomed in really, really, really far on that little sensor that's in here. So again, just my thoughts. It's a minor nuance, but I did notice that um, you get some weird stuff going on when you're trying to play around and adjust it. So uh, was I still able to successfully adjust it and see what I was looking at? Yes, absolutely. But uh, I'm, again, giving you guys as many facts as I can from my experience behind this. Now, the last thing, and I would say it's probably the biggest con, although I completely expected this one, believe it or not, is that the nighttime performance isn't great. So um, on the box, they actually say low light capabilities. I don't know that they actually advertise this as night vision or not, to be honest, but um, I would say low light capability is a good way of putting it because um, in order to do 120 power uh, magnification, you're gonna have to have a very high megapixel count to, where the, to keep the image looking good. So for those camera guys out there again, or people into electronics and cameras, um, you know that the more megapixels you have that the the lower the low light performance is. So the camera I'm currently filming on right now, I'm actually in a fairly dark studio, but it looks nice and bright. It only has a 12 megapixel sensor, which is a direct 4K resolution readout. And Sony markets this camera as the low light king, essentially, because it's a big sensor, not that many pixels relative to other cameras, and it gets good low light performance. That being said, I can't digitally zoom in on the camera you guys are watching me through because the image falls apart. There's not that much resolution. To get to 120 power digitally, uh, you gotta have a lot of resolution which is gonna hurt you in terms of low light. So it makes sense that the low light wasn't great because the trade-off is that you can digitally zoom. So you have to pick one or the other. Me personally, I don't know that I will use this a whole lot at night. It is a cool perk that it can be done. It's not the greatest quality uh, in my opinion compared to dedicated night vision devices, obviously. Um, so I would think of it not so much as a, you know, a nighttime uh, spotting scope, but it's a very capable daytime scope that does have the capability to assist you somewhat at night is, is the best way I would put it. So again, the fact that they even included that feature was pretty, uh, um, I didn't realize that at first until I started playing around with it. I'm like, oh, wow, that's neat. That's cool. Um, so something to put in your back pocket should you ever need it. Uh, I just, again, want to give you my honest thoughts and opinions after now using this for quite a while. So like I said, I want to end on a good note, and that is that the capability that this has to zoom in digitally honestly impressed me quite a bit. It zooms in an insane amount. When you first start playing around with it, you'll keep zooming, and you're like, man, is that, is that, it's got to be capped out, but no, it keeps going and it keeps zooming in further and further. So what I actually did is I brought one of my uh, um, cameras out to the range. I had a 70 to 200 millimeter lens and on that camera it has a 33 megapixel sensor which means I can punch in on that sensor quite a bit before I start really losing resolution. And it's, I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys, a, I'll put it on the screen here, a, a quick comparison. Um, what is essentially like a six or $7,000 camera setup um, this thing is holding its own very well. The Omnis is holding its own for a fraction of the price. So again, um, for those that think that the price tag is steep, the capability of what it's doing at the price point it's doing is actually pretty good compared to other, I mean, really high-end camera setups that are out there. So just wanted to share that as another data point for you guys. Um, I haven't had any reliability issues whatsoever, which is always good. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that a spotting scope is necessarily critical equipment. It's not actually mounted to my rifles. That's probably priority number one. This is a supplementary or a, a very nice to have kind of thing at the range. That being said, it was 100% reliable. Um, all different kinds of weather conditions. Thanks to Texas, the weather's hectic. So cold, really hot, all that. Um, no issues. Uh, admittedly, I didn't expose it to direct rain or anything while I had it. Um, but again, no issues, no dust or anything getting inside of it. Um, during my use and I'm not super gentle on things. I didn't intentionally abuse it, but it was tossed in a range bag, driven around in a truck off road and I didn't baby it by any means and virtually no issues whatsoever. Um, aesthetically, everything's holding up. It looks for the most part brand new other than dust starting to really collect around the crevices on this, um, but functionally 100%. No issues other than that, like I said, the battery nuance and I, I don't know if that factors into reliability or not. But again, just sharing with you guys my observations. So other than that, if you want something that's small and lightweight that you can record your hunts, long range shooting, etc., you know, sky's the limit, 
with some capabilities at night as well. Um, the Amis is gonna kind of check all those boxes. So I think it's very unique. Again, I'm personally gonna continue to use this for future accuracy, testing, reviews, optic reviews, etc. cetera, um, on the channel, just because it's a very capable tool and very, very useful to have around at the gun range. And in a fairly compact and lightweight package, I mean, it's something you can throw in a backpack, go on a hunt, whatever you need to do. Again, it, it's, it's really versatile. So overall, I've been thoroughly impressed with it. Hopefully this video shares some insights and helps you decide if this is a tool that you should be adding to your arsenal of range day tools. But if you have any questions that I left unanswered in this video, please leave it in the comment section below. I do try to be as responsive as possible. And again, keep an eye out on the AccuFire website for any of their promotions they may be having. And again, you can use discount code 4MR to save yourself 5% off while also supporting my channel so I can continue uploading content like this. So that's about all I have for you on this video. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, guys, have a good one.